Hi guys, welcome to the next video. We're going to be talking about uh, the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. Um, um, it's Matthew 25 verses 14 uh, through 30, I think. 14 through 30. And yes, because 31 talks about what we were talking about in the next one. So uh, in the last video. So 14 through 30 on Matthew 25. And so let's just read this right quick because it's going to be important that we go ahead and, and just kind of read it. Um, uh, let's see, starting at verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who, are, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents and to another two and to another one to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And so... So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord... You delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But the Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and, la and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the, talent, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Okay, so just kind of just going over that before we even delve into it and even get deep into it. We're looking at, we're looking at three servants. We're looking at two that went out and did the things of, that, that the Lord asked them to do, their master uh, asked them to do. And the one um, that just didn't, that did, didn't, didn't do the same as the other two. Um, interesting that um, he's, he's painting a picture of his master as being someone that's very, very hard and mean and, um, and that he was afraid of him. He had fear within him. Now, um, now we know that's, that's not, um, that's not fruit of the, of the Lord. We know that to be certain. And, um, and so I thought this was very, very interesting when I went in and started digging into a little bit of study, um, within Matthew 25 and, the the parable of the talents, um, I, I came across some things that were really, really interesting. Um, the first thing is, is that um, when I was looking through on Matthew um, uh, 25, starting in verse 14 and 15, it's talking about talents. And so I thought, well, you know, let's, let's just go ahead and kind of define what that might be. Because in my mind, when I uh, was just looking at it, I figured it was some type of, of money. 
um, you know. And so what I did is I went on to um, I went on to Blue Letter Bible, and I pulled up Matthew 25. And when I pulled up Matthew 25 and looked at um, the word talent, I wanted to see what the Strongs um, said about um, the word talent. And um, it gave me t it gave me um, uh, the Greek the Greek Strong's Concordance number five zero zero seven. And when I pulled that up, um, it gave me um, it gave me some information about what this talent may mean. And um, it's um, it's saying that it's some type of a scale of balance or a pair of scales. Um, it also said that which is weighed. Um, a talent, um, meaning um, it, that could mean all different kinds of um, weights and measures. Um, so, for example, a talent of silver in Israel weighed about 100 pounds, and a talent of gold in Israel weighed about 200 pounds. So we're, we're, we're understanding here that it, it is, it does appear to be, um, it does appear to be some type of currency, some type of um, currency that he's speaking of, uh, a coin of some sort, um, some some type of treasure. Um, so then when I went through and looked up to see just as a definition what talent might be, I went ahead and looked up um, just defining the word talent. And it just says a natural aptitude or skill or people possessing a skill. And then it gave me a bunch of synonyms. Um, it said, and I'm not going to read them all, but I want to read the ones that I that really stood out to me. Um, it said um, aptitude, a gift, a technique, an ability, expertise, a capacity, a strength, a forte, a skill. And I thought to myself, well, you know, um, that sounds a lot like what, you know, he's, it said gift. It sounds a lot like what the Lord gives us. Um, when we receive a gift from the Lord, we receive the gift of prophecy, or we receive the gift of healing, or we receive, um, you know, different the different gifts that the Lord gives us so that we can um, minister the gift of teaching. You know, it's these types of gifts that I thought, oh, okay, so maybe he's talking about that as well. In this parable, I believe he's speaking of money, but there's a lot more in this parable that we want to kind of look at um, just for a minute. Now, when I was reading through um, this particular scripture, um, Matthew 25, 15, and to one he gave five talents, and to two, uh, and to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and immediately went on a journey. My cross reference in my Bible is is uh, Romans twelve six, and so I pulled up Romans um, Romans uh, twelve, and I want to read to you um, verse three through verse. Eight, um, three through eight. It says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads 
with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, so everybody has different gifts. Everybody, according to their, to their faith, according to that scripture for, um, what was it, Romans 12. Um, here in Matthew 25, he's saying the same thing. He's saying he's given these talents out to each according to his own ability. So he's giving something that he wants you to do something with. So this tells us a couple of things. This tells us then these servants that he's talking about here are not just the servants, the regular servants. He's talking about these are the bond servants. Now remember, we talked about the difference of the servants um, in, in, a, in a recent video. And we went through, remember the servants, they, they were paid and they could do whatever they wanted to. They could marry whoever they wanted to. Remember, we, we, we talked about that. But then the bond servants were different. The bond servants were part of the household and the bond servants were, you know, they tended to the family's business and they were taken care of in that manner. And the master took care of them and gave them everything that they needed. Now, remember, the bond servant um, is in Abraham's um, family. Remember, it was the bond servant that handled all of the financial matters. And it was the bond servant that was sent out with all the camels and the gold and the silver and all of those caravans um, of wealth going out to find um, a wife for Abraham's son. Remember that? So, you know, these, these people were, these people were trustworthy. They were obedient. They did what the Lord, they did what, you know, what their masters asked them to do. And they went and completed their task and came back. And, and we talked about this when we were talking about, um, you know, the difference between, between some of the ser the servants and the bond servants, we were talking about, you know, well, what, you know, what, what is it that drives them? And it's the love of the master. It's wanting to please the master. That's what drives them. It's not the fear that we read in, in Matthew 25 for that one that buried his talent into the ground. It's not fear that drives the bond servant because the bond servant knows the father. The bond servant knows the master and he knows the master's heart. And so it's not fear that drives them. It's not fear and, you know, and, and, and being, you know, saying he's such a hard person. He's such, you know, he's this, he's that. It's not that at all because the bond servant truly knows the master and truly knows the master's heart. And so we know if money is being given to them for them according to their own ability and in accordance to what we just read in Romans 12, then we understand that these are gifts and these are things, that, talents, coins, money, some type of treasure that's being given so that it can be multiplied. That's so it can be it, it can be maybe not, you know, multiplied 100 percent, but it can be increased that's the word I need to use. It can be increased. And so, um, and so we know right here that this is not then the regular servant. This is the bond servant. This is the, the different, the different servant. And so it, it continues to go on and it speaks of, you know, he, he went, he traded his five and he got five more. And so the two, the guy with the two did the same thing, but the guy with the one, he was, he was the one that decided he was going to do something different. And so when I was doing some studying about this, um, I was looking to see what, why was the one servant not, not willing to do the same things that the other two were? Um, and it didn't dawn on me that it was a bond servant. Uh, it was a bond servant that actually went and did the things. Is this just the regular servant? Is this someone that's just a, is different? It's not the bond servant. Is the third one that just had the one, um, was that a bond servant or was that, um, was he trying to, to, to encourage him to be that? I, you know, I don't know, but it certainly does show that there was a, that there was a, a misunderstanding as to who their master was. So if we look at, um, if we look at, um, what this could possibly be, it's saying, you know, the, the third guy is saying, he's saying, if I make a profit, 
it's going to go to the master. It's not going to come to me. So what, you know, what am I going to do? You know, what, what do I want to do about it? And if I lose the money, I'm just going to be in trouble, you know, because now he's got that fear based thinking. Right. And so, and so he buries the talent. He's just like, well, there it is. That's, that's where it's going to be. Nobody can steal it because they don't know where it is. It's buried in the ground and that's just the way it's going to be. And he went on about his thing. And so, and so this particular servant's main reason for inaction is dread of failure and its consequences. And so when I read that, I thought to myself, who, you know, that is, that is very, very interesting. That is very, very interesting because dread of failure and its consequences is, you know, sometimes we can be really afraid to share what the Lord has given us. We can be really afraid to share what the Lord has given us. We're not, we're not ready. We're not, we're, we're afraid to put it out there. You know, when I first became, when I first got saved, um, I had to go and do some things. I had, I had someone that, um, that was in, in my job that, um, that I wanted to, that was going in to have surgery and I wanted to go and pray for this person. And I had already told her, um, I'm going to come and I'm going to meet you just before your surgery and we'll say a prayer together. And, um, you know, it's all going to be, it's all going to be fine. And she was like, okay, well, that's no problem. And so I get into the hospital, I have my Bible and I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm ready to go and pray. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know, your prayer is not going to be good enough. I had, I had this fear come on me. Like, you know, what is your prayer going to be about it? You know how it's not even going to be good enough. She's going to listen to what you're trying to say. And it, you know, because you're so new, you don't even know, you know, and I just, I started getting, I started getting fear. I had fear. I was like, I, I knew I wanted to go and, and pray for her. And, um, and I, and I started getting nervous and, and, you know, and, and fear this, this attack. The enemy definitely did not want me praying for her. I did go up to her and I did complete the prayer and I said it right in her ear and it just, it just, oh, it overcame her. She was so overcome with emotion just from the prayer. You know, she was wiping tears from her eyes and I just said, girl, everything is going to be fine. You're going to come through the surgery fine. And she did. She came, she came out fantastic. You know, the Lord had his hand on her. Uh, most definitely. But, um, but I wanted to say that, you know, sometimes, sometimes the Lord can go ahead and, and, and do that. He, I mean, you know, um, can you hold on just a minute? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pause. I've got an issue going on in the background with my kitty. He's trying to get in my door. I, I know he wants to play and I just need to go pet him for a minute. Can yeah, just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I could not concentrate. I, I kept hearing my kitty. He was pawing at the door. He scratched me. He wanted to come in and guys, I got a lot going on at my house and my poor kitty cats are like so bent out of shape. They are just like, they are beside themselves. I mean, we're having some contract work done and we're doing some packing and you know, everything is just discombobulated in my, my poor little kitties. They are just they're beside themselves and usually my husband is you know loving on them and petting them and all of that while I'm doing my videos but um he's out of town and so I had to stop I, I felt the need to stop and and uh, play with them for a little bit so anyway they're preoccupied for the moment so we may have to we may have to make this quick now so let me see where was I <laughs> all right we were talking about the third one I think the third one, the third servant. And we were talking about the slave's main reason for inaction is dread or failure, a dread of failure or its consequences. And, and, oh, that's right. I was talking to you about, um, when I had gone in and prayed for a friend of mine, when I was just, you know, newly saved and, um, and fear had come in, you know, and I thought to myself, um, you know, is, is this, is this what some people that are saved actually think, you know, what what good is it going to be for me to do anything? I mean, you know, I don't know anything. You know, I, you know, I'm new, I'm newly saved, or, you know, I'm I'm not hearing directly from the Lord. I'm, you know, I don't have the gift of prophecy, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. So why, you know, why am I gonna why am I gonna go and move forward and, you know, you know, doing doing something for the Lord? That you know, and so I think I feel like when I look at this guy. 
this servant, I say it's a guy, I don't, you know, I don't know. But when I look at this, this servant, I, I that's kind of the impression that I get off of him. You know, oh, I say him again, maybe it is him. <laughs> but off of the servant is the fact that um, that's kind of the, it sounds like that's the mentality that is, 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 is creeping through in the scriptures. And so, so the first two servants, we see the one with the five talents and then the one with the two, we see that, um, we see that they're being obedient. We see that they're, obe they're obedient to what, um, what their master, excuse me, wanted of them. And, um, and so, so let's take a look at this about the parable itself. So, um, if we're looking at this particular parable, then we're looking at that, the master actually will represent Jesus Christ and that Jesus is going on a journey and he's going to ascend to the father. And during his absence, he demands that the pe that his people not only wait for his return, but also that their lives be productive. And, um, and so, because one day after a long time, um, he will indeed return to judge his people, uh, for what they have done during his absence. And so, um, so the investing of the talents does not illustrate the developing of one's natural abilities, um, but the seizing of opportunities to do good works, not only for one's own sake, but for the sake of the master. So why is it for the sake of the master? Because the master loves his children and he wants all of his children to, to be saved. He wants none to perish. And so the actions that we're doing are for the sake of the master. And so as in the story, each servant is given talents according to his capability. So Jesus recognizes that some disciples have greater capacities and more opportunities for fruitfulness than, than do others. So let's take a look. People here in America versus someone in a third world country, you know, that doesn't have electricity and running water or anything like that in their day-to-day -day life compared to um, someone here that has access to internet, a computer with a camera, come on and speak. So the, the, the capabilities that someone in America would have over someone that's in a third world country are just completely different. And so even Jesus is recognizing that there are differences in us. And it's the same thing with Romans 12 when we were reading that, that there is differences and, and that he gives us according to what to what our faith is. And so the requirement is that each one be productive according to his own capacities and opportunities. So, um, so for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. And so, um, and so the responses of the first two servants we see um, that they, they don't question anything, just obediently walk forward, they get the things done that needed to be done, and, um, and, and, and they did it. But now the third, the third servant, it was more like it was an obligation. Now, the, the Bible doesn't come and tell us that the first two don't, didn't feel that obligation that they had to do it. It had to be done. But if we're looking into it and understanding that they are actually handling money on behalf of their master, then we know that they're a bond servant. And so if we know they're a bond servant, we know that that, can, that conversation has already been had between the servants and their master and that they love their master and they wanted to be a part of their family. And so what here is really interesting too is that is that when the master came back and he allowed, he's allowing them to keep what they have. The one that had the five talents and made five talents more, he was allowed to keep it all. He kept it all. The one with the two, the same way. But the one that had the one and did nothing with it, it was taken from him and given to the one with the 10 talents. So it's interesting that when we look at the servants and we look at when the master comes back and we find out, you know, 
what we what we heard and read in the beginning from the third servant oh he's a hard man and you know and and i better just bury this you know i'm afraid of him but that's not truly what what the master was the master that came back allowed said good and faithful servant you know go enter into my joy and and they they he didn't ask for the money back he didn't ask for the talents back he's he got you were allowed to keep them same thing with the two but the one had to give it up and had to go to the other one and that that lines up with verse 29 where it says for every for to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance but from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away and so we have to use what the Lord has given us. It's important that we use what the Lord has given us and move forward in what we we understand the Lord, we understand um, for us to do. And, and it doesn't matter that you, that you have all of these magnificent gifts that are matured because it takes time to mature in that gift. You know, I, I think a lot of people think, you know, oh, I... You know, I, I, I don't under, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a new Christian. I don't really understand it. Guys, new Christians are on fire for the Lord. And when they go through and they're learning scripture and they're picking it up, they're picking it up and running with it. And guys, they can come right out of the gate and start explaining some of these scriptures and have the Lord give them a, a, a deeper understanding and they can come right out and tell you what they learned. And some people will be sitting back saying, you know what? I never understood it that way. I never realized it could, you know, it, how, you know, the perception of this could be just a little bit different. So it's, it, don't think that you have to be mature in what you're doing. Just share what the Lord is giving you. Just share what the Lord is giving you. Now, we're going to be talking about this in the next video, in another in another video, and I'm going to be explaining to you what I understand the Lord to be telling me, how important it is that we share and do what the Lord is giving us, because it it all ties in to being able to help somebody else, but in 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 more of a manner than probably what you're thinking. So guys. Take the time to stop and share what the Lord is showing you. If it's just a word that he gives in the middle of the night or through your prayer when you're sitting down, maybe you're just starting now out with your journal and you're sitting down and you're getting quiet so that you can start writing down all your thoughts um, as it comes to you, whether it be yours, whether it be from the Lord, whether it be from the enemy or whoever, you're just going to jot down all of your thoughts that are coming out and when you take a look at them you're going to look and say okay well i know this lines up with scripture and so let me see what what you know where let let me go to that scripture and let's go ahead and do some study there because then that that may be the lord pointing you into that direction or maybe it's a a one word like i had a one word you know maybe the the lord is going to give you a a, a one word and and i think I had a, I had a, um, I had a friend get a hold of me and said, yes, I, you know, I had a word that was given to me and I didn't even know what it meant. And, and, you know, and so I had to go look it up and, and then it led me on to this journey and this is where the Lord is trying to, you know, and how it was all interconnecting and everything. Guys, that's, that's how he works. That's how he does. And, and that's how he'll start leading you. And so share those things, share those things because it, it's going to be helpful and edifying and encouraging to somebody else, but it's also going to be helping you because if the Lord gave it to you right here in Matthew 25, we're learning and we're understanding. Do not just sit on it. Share it. Give it. Give it so it can increase. Give it so it can multiply. Give it so that seed can be planted in somebody's life and grow. Um, it's that important. It's that important. And if you go back and you read this parable, you understand, oh my gosh, the Lord has given me talents. 
You know, I've had dreams. I've had visions. I've, I've received messages. I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've had studies. I've sat in church and was blessed by a particular sermon. And, you know, share it. Share what you've been told. Share what blessed you. Because if it blesses you, it encourages you, it edifies you, it's going to do the same for somebody else. So, so don't just sit back and think, oh, I'm not a mature, you know, this, or I, I, you know, I haven't been walking in that gift very long. You know, I wasn't walking in that gift very long either, but I was told it, it put it out there, put it out there. And that's how it started. And when I go back and read some of my messages from when it first started, I'm thinking, wow, you know, and I can remember being so timid and afraid to try and put it out there. Um, because I, my, here's the thing. I was so afraid to try and put it out there because I, this is what I said. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to be, I don't want to deceive anybody else. I don't want to, I don't want to put it out if it's wrong. What if it's wrong? What if I didn't hear right? What if, what if, what if other people laugh at it? What if they don't like it? What if, what if they say something? What if, what if, what if they call me a false prophet? What if, you know, what if, what if, all, all, all. It's the same things. It's the same thoughts that came to my mind in the beginning. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. But I'm going to tell you guys, when you go and you receive something from the Lord, here, here's an example. I received a message from the Lord and I was unsure about, um, I was unsure about it because there was something in it that was new to me and I wasn't sure then at that point, did I hear him right? And so um, I had, I, I was at work. Um, I had started walking back to my car and, um, and I started talking to the Lord. And as soon as I got into my car, I said, Father, I need for you to confirm this message for me. I don't, you know, I need, I need for you to confirm it. And so I pulled out a notepad and a pen and I just wrote down everything that I was hearing. So then I took that and I went back to my house and I, I laid that out and I laid out the message that I had received earlier and it, it it confirmed each other. Um, some, some even the same wording and the same language in the manner of the sentences that was said. So without me having it and been working all day and what have you, I didn't know, I, you know, there was no way I could have done that. And so guys, I'm here to tell you, sometimes it'll be the enemy trying to stop us. Sometimes it'll be our mentality trying to stop us. We serve a loving, gracious, kind God. And if he's given us a dream, um, we can share the dream. If we don't have the gift of interpretation, I don't have the gift of interpretation, but I receive dreams, so I put it out there. I put the dream out there. Sometimes I'll put, I think this might be what this particular part means, but I don't know. And, um, and sometimes I'll put, are y'all saying that? Sometimes I'll put, um, you know, just the dream out there. Guys, share it. If he gave it to you, put it out there. Because there's somebody else out there that has the gift of interpretation. And they can help you understand what's going on with the dreams. I've had to do that myself. You guys are watching these videos. You know, I don't, I don't do that. And I've, I've even shared several interpretations that were given to me. Um, by two dear people that I know, dear friends of mine. So I, you know, my thing is, is guys, listen to what the, the teaching is in Matthew 25 about the, about the talents. You can't hold them. Don't hold them. It's, it will, it will cause you harm to hold them. Don't hold them. Take a step, take a bold step and go ahead and, and put it out there. Whether it's a, whether it's um, whether it's a song, we had a beautiful sister sing um, a Michael Jackson song on YouTube. I never fell out of my chair. She sang so well. I was like, what? You know, I sing, but I, you know, just enough to annoy everybody. I can get through the song, but 
you know, in my heart and in my mind, I'm, you know, I'm singing real well. But, but you know, people have gifts. Do, do it. She said the Lord asked her to sing it. She put she put it forth. It was beautiful. I don't know if you all know which which person I'm talking about. You probably do. And then, you know, it is it is it poems? Does the Holy Spirit talk to you in rhymes? Put it out there. You know, are you just, you know, writing an endearing letter to the Lord, a love letter to your king? You know, from your heart and you just so, you know, put it out there. Put it out there. Is it one that he gave to you? Put it out there. Put it out there. And don't listen, because if he's speaking to you that way as a child, as his child, he's speaking to all that way as his child. That love doesn't change from you to you to you to you to you. It's the same love. He loves us just as much. He died for all of us. So, guys, you know, think about it. Your dreams, your visions. You know, the words that you're hearing, just take a minute and share it. Um, if you don't have a camera or you don't want to get in front of the YouTube camera, listen, I'm, I'm with you. I, when I first started, I, there, you can go through, you can go through photo albums in my house and you very rarely see me in a picture. That's, that's how I don't want to be on camera in at all kind of stuff and I'm talking about for years I'm talking about since since I was young and um, and so for me to be on the YouTube camera and video and 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 doing videos that that's not me if it wasn't for the grace of God working through me I, w I would not be able to to do this at all but if he gives you something he will equip you with it he will help you with it. And, you know, and it might be slow at first and it might be a little uncomfortable at first and, you know, and, 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 and what have you, but it, it will start flowing because that's him. That's, that's what he helps his children with. So guys, it's that important. Don't let it hinder you. Don't let it hinder your walk. Don't let it hurt you by keeping this quiet. Don't, don't keep this closed, this gate this is a gate. Open the gate. Open it up and let and and let out what the Lord has given you. Let your light shine out um, through through the gate. Um, all right, so let's finish. Um, so they allowed them to keep all of the talents that they had. They just allowed allowed it to keep it. And so um, and so the irony of the story is that the last servant experienced just what he feared the the master's wrath and even the action described in verse 27 would have been better than the burial of the talent now that is where he said well what you should have just deposited it in a bank and i would have gotten interest on it right and um and so even partial obedience would have been better than sheer disobedience Okay, he had he obeyed for no other reason than that the master commanded it. He too would have recognized how badly he had misjudged the master and would have received the blessings granted the other two. As matters turn out, the punishment for ne for the neglected opportunity is to be deprived of opportunity. The judgment upon this servant is again solemn warning to disciples to demonstrate the authenticity of their profession by steadfast obedience to Jesus. So guys, when we're looking at it, we don't, how this is, how this is going to, it's, it's more than just what they're saying here. This is, this is the gifts and the talents that are given to us that we need to share. And it's more than that. It's, it's, it's the words. It's, it's the books, the, the gathering of all of this stuff. It's the songs. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the food. 
it's the it's the resources it's it's everything that we're now going to be giving from these talents from these things that are given to us we are to increase them okay we are to share them we are to increase them for who for the kingdom for Jesus for him for his use now is he going to take it from us it doesn't appear from this that it's going to be taken from us but he can take it he can take it all he can give me another five talents or two or however whatever he f finds me able to handle and I will go out and I'll increase it again only because I love the Lord no other reason no other you know I have to do it no fear of the master and you know what's gonna come of me if I don't do it you know that that's not it that's not freedom there's no freedom in that there's no freedom in that fear. And remember, we, remember we talked about in an, in an old video before, we talked about, you know, prayer draws things to you. Remember we talked about that. Prayer, with all your heart, draws things to you. But fear, with all your heart, also draws things to you. And not the things that you want to have either. Remember, because if it goes one way, it goes the other way, because it's that energy that's there that draws things to you like a magnet. And so we know the principle of prayer, and we know the Lord has told us, pray with all your heart, right? And so if fear enters into your heart, and you're, you're fearful, and you're talking about, you know, being afraid and fearful, then what you're talking about and thinking about and the energy that you have of that fear, that's going to draw that to you. And we see that in here. It was the one thing that he did fear. And that was the one thing that happened to him. So guys, be real careful. Be real careful. Especially when we're going through and you're, and you're looking through and we're trying to learn how to discern, you know. Is it of the Lord? Is it not of the Lord? You know, there's new revelation coming out right now. We know in Daniel, not everything was so, was told in the Bible. Things were sealed up. We know that. So we know that there's new revelation coming out now. We, we're talking about some of it now. We're talking about some of the things that are coming out. And so, you know, we have to know how to discern. Is this of the Lord? Is this not of the Lord? And we now know that there's going to be things that are going to be happening that's going to divide us out. You're either going to go with, yes, this is of the Lord, and you're going to continue moving forward. Or you're going to say, no, this is not of the Lord. So it's going to be a choice. There's going to be a choice of things. Are we in a darkness area now? Are the choices being given to us now? Is it a spiritual application before a physical one? I don't know. You know, that's that's things we need to we need to talk to the Lord about and we need to we need to kind of decipher about. So the Lord led me, um, and he has been trying to guide me into doing a teaching on the uh, not a teaching, um um, a video on um, the, the parable of the talents and I I couldn't figure out why he wanted me to do that well then he brought back to memory what I had I had a friend get a hold of me on my email and um, and she asked me she said um, she said I just I, I I have I had a dream or something I can't recall a vision or a dream I'm sorry renew I I can't recall what you told me in my email but she had a dream let's just say it was a dream she had a dream about coins gold coins and um, she asked me if I knew um, anything about it and um, and I said no I, I'm sorry I, I really don't know anything about it and um, but then the Lord reminded me, reminded me of two things, actually. Reminded me of a dream that I had back in April of 2014. And then also that I had talked with um, a very dear friend of mine. Um, and she and her good friend 
um, someone in their family had had dreams of, uh, of a woman coming and giving out gold coins. And so, um, and so we're going to want to talk about that because all of this, believe it or not, all of this that we're talking about ties into the I am far reaching understanding that we had. It all ties into it. And so um, I'm going to stop this video here because um, it's gotten it's gotten long already. Um, but I want I want um, I want to pick up the next one unless the Lord just has me go somewhere else for a little while, you know, go off on a different path and then return back to this. If if we're going to continue going on and not be interrupted to do something else first, which is fine with me because he's always got things in perfect order. Um, we're going to talk about the dream that I had and what it may may mean. And we're also going to talk about um, another dream that um, a friend of mine um, and her her good friend and family had. Um, and, and it's just this real small, little small amount, but it's all dealing with these coins. Um, it all is dealing with treasure that we're storing up and how it's going to be used. <clears throat> so guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to my next video. Um, I know it's kind of slow moving as, as we're going along, but um, I, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something that the Lord may want to make sure that is, is, is identified in these videos. Um, so if you, if you are familiar with some of this stuff and you want to fast forward through it, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. So guys, I just wanted to say thank you all so much. God bless you. Uh, thank you for the comments, the very kind comments. And I'm so glad that some of the information, um, that's being provided out is confirmation to some of you new watchers. I am really excited to hear that because, um, that just gets my, that just gets my motor running and gets my jets going. I'm just like, yeah, you know, because it's also confirmation to me. And, um, so I want to say thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on that as well. So guys, um, God bless you. I love you. Stay safe under, under the Lord's wing and we'll talk soon. Bye.